In one of our videos, there was a woman contacting me. Her name is Madeleine, and uh, she told me about a prophecy that God gave her 30 years ago. And uh, that was uh, 30 years ago. Mind that, what I'm saying, because it's important. Uh, and God talked about uh, a great fall away in the church, where uh, sins like uh, homosexuality and uh, pedophilia would be accepted as a norm in the church of today. And this uh, prophecy, Lewis, uh, is, uh, I wrote about it in a blog entry, but it's in, it's in uh, Swedish, so I, don't, I know you haven't read it. But uh, it's obvious that there is a big, great fall away in Sweden and in the EU and Europe and in the US, I would say, uh, to make uh, what is considered for us as uh, Bible-believing Christians sins accepted. And the church is adopting those uh, worldly uh, phenomenons as something that is acceptable. We have the HBQT movement, gender movement, we have uh, now pedophilia, something that uh, should be considered as uh, normal. The Swedish church is also um, arranging studies in Quran in their churches, they are removing the crosses from churches not to offend Muslims. So we can see in the old organized church, the classical church, the traditional church, there is a great fall away. And Lewis, what do you think that God will do about this problem? Because it's obviously a problem for him as it is for us who are really Christians and not religious. What is your view on this? I think that um, God's number one priority with the events on the earth is the, the body of Christ. It's the most important thing to Him. Uh, he loves and He's as concerned with the body of His Son as much as any father would be concerned about the father of His Son. And that all things that take place on the earth if you're going to look at it from God's perspective, should be looked at in the context of how it affects the body of Christ. And in fact, I don't believe that any accurate interpretation of, of any event can be made without uh, factoring in its impact or involvement with the body of Christ. And this uh, falling away that you mentioned in the woman's prophecy is quite biblical. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul writes that the Lord will not return until two things happen. And one of them is called the great apostasy or the great falling away. And I believe that um, this current move in the world system to legitimize pedophilia <clears throat> Uh, can be viewed in terms of God's move to work on the body of Christ. The way I see it, God is shoving a wedge. What is the Swedish word? Wedge. Uh, shield. Sh shield. Shield. It's this pointed iron thing that you use to split big chunks of wood. God is uh, pushing this shield down through the church community so that he can separate those that are called and chosen from those who are going to side with the world. And this is for the purpose of purifying the body of Christ. What God wants to do, of course, is to, is to purify the body of Christ so that it I'm going to read from Ephesians. Let Paul speak for, for me. Ephesians 4, 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God 
unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is God's goal to glorify His Son, to fully manifest the scope of Christ's perfect and complete redemptive work on the earth, which the church is not doing now. The church right now is a far cry from that. The church right now is barely, well, it's, it's indistinguishable from the world. But uh, God is going to keep on hammering on the church till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, unity of the faith doesn't mean everybody believes the same. It means that each part, each person is doing his role in the body. You mentioned uh, 2 Timothy. And, uh, Thess Thessalonians. Yeah, but before that you mentioned 2 Timothy. And I would like to read to you what is written in 2 Timothy 3. Uh, but realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revealers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconceivable, malicious gossip, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, holding a far form of good godliness, although they have denied its power. I vo avoid such men as these. And this is for me, when I read it, what uh, Second Tim what, um, Timoth what is written here in Second Timothy, is that this is the world today. I tell you, it, this is this bull, is, bullseye. This is right on. Yeah, it? it is. <laughs> it is right on. And uh, you need to face this, that uh, the times that we're in and the, the choices that you're going to have to make and the eternal consequences at stake, this is not just a decision whether or not you're going to get food and gasoline. It's going to be a decision uh, of eternal consequences. Now, when I say that the, God is going to put a wedge, a, a shield, down through the body to separate the chosen from those who are not, then this is a serious deal and God is fair. Of all, above all things, God is fair. And if God is going to separate the chosen from those who are not going to make it, then... Through the kingdom of God, <clears throat> you mean? Yes. Then these, these people are going to... <clears throat> Join forces with the world, which is directly opposed to the kingdom of God. There's a, there is a war going on, if you hadn't noticed, between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world, and the God of this world, who is the devil. And these people are going to be forced to side with that. And so they're going to face judgment. Now, just very briefly, there's two judgments. There's the there's the judgment between heaven and hell where God the Father on the great white throne decides heaven or hell. And then there's the judgment of the church on the judgment seat of Christ. But I really don't want to get into all that. What I want to get at is that these people are going to face the judgment of God. And so, what God is doing now, which, is, which has been quite a surprise to me to see, but it's now become just blatantly obvious, <clears throat> is that those in the world are going to be tainted with the, the worldly acceptance of pedophilia. Mm -hmm. Now, even five years ago, or, or two years ago, most of us would have thought it inconceivable that world opinion would accept the practice of pedophilia. This is one of the most abominable, horrendous, vile actions that anybody can ever conceive of. I mean, you have, a few years ago you had to just stretch your imagination to the limits 
to even imagine such a thing, and yet this is where we are. We're seeing governments endorse it. The, the government of the UK is now mandating uh, sex education for five-year-olds, mm. which includes homosexuality, transgender, and the whole nine yards of the homosexual lifestyle. And uh, Satan is taking his campaign to the, to the court of world opinion so that they would go along with what the Catholic Church wants. It's the same in Sweden where we have an um, um, activist movement called RFSU, the Association for Sexual Education in English. And they are pushing this agenda too. And uh, they are saying that uh, in preschool, children, kindergarten children should be allowed to uh, explore their own sexuality and sexuality together with others. So it's an HBQT and that gender stuff is all over the place. Uh, you are not allowed to criticize it in Sweden because then you can lose your job. That's how bad it is. And um, well, as I see it, this goes back to the Bible. When you read the Old Testament, when you read the, the, the worship of Baal and Moloch, and the, when the Israelites were sacrificing their own children on fires, yes. this is coming back it, now. It, it, yes. In, all, in yes. our world. Yes, this is. Today we sacrifice children by abortion. And now this pedophilia, because that's also a way of destroying a life, a small life that God has created. At the, at the risk of getting gross with you, pedophilia is the sexual abuse of an innocent child yes. for the pleasure of the homosexual adult. Uh, the, the kids are basically sex slaves and damaged for life. Um, to me, the, the horrors of this are, are beyond limits. And yet, this is now going to be part of the world system that these people adhere to and align themselves with when they are on the wrong side of this shield, 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 wedge, wedge. And herein, is God's fairness. He is making it so horrible to side against Him that it is virtually impossible for you to justify your position. He is, he is adding on to all the other sins of aligning yourself against God and His Christ. This horrendous uh, act of pedophilia, which is now, uh, <clears throat> as we covered in our last lesson, the, the Catholic Church has found that most people that have any godly nature want nothing to do with being a priest. And so in order to recruit more priests, they're just openly uh, using pedophilia as a drawing card to attract more priests into their clergy. And so now this is flowing over into the world. And it's now going to be, if not already, one of the things that is stamped on the people who are not among the chosen. So when, when the time comes, when the world system is going to make you choose between God and the world system, be aware that when you choose the world system, you're also including an endorsement of pedophilia, one of the most horrendous, abominable crimes imaginable. Mm. And so then when you're judged, you will not be able to escape this label that's on you. No. And um, I, there is a, was a very, very important prophecy I listened to a few days ago from Marcus Rogers. You know that uh, U.S. Army guy 
who is used by God as a prophet and a minister. And uh, he said that God has showed him uh, what will happen in America. And he talked about, for, about it for almost 20 minutes. But the conclusion was about uh, persecution. The Bible is talking about persecution of Christians in the last days. And he said that the persecution of Christians will uh, be that the world system will adjust. So as a Christian, as a believer, you have to make a decision if you want to adopt to the world system or not. And if you not want to adopt to the world system, not want to accept uh, gender, cultural Marxism stuff, uh, you not want to accept pedophilia as a normal thing, then you will have very big problem just existing in this, the, this society. Because the, the, everything will be tailored for that bizarre, uh, satanic uh, change that is going through not only the church but also the society as a whole. And this will be the persecution because the Christians will not be accepted by society and just to exist in the society, living in the society will be very very tough. Where should you send your children to school, as an example, as a Christian? Where they teach cultural Marxism, in, they do that in Sweden already. Uh, and uh, then we come to that uh, world um, monetary system that uh, we also written about in the Bible, that you have to receive a chip or something in your hand in order to make exist in the society and pay for your food and everything. And there are many Christians who are concerned with this because many believe that this might be actually the mark of the beast. I don't think so personally, but we have to have respect for those Christians, sisters and brothers who think so. And, but it's all, all, anyway, it's a way of uh, adopting to the world system by accepting to take this ship in the hand. And then you have in some way accepted the world system. You live in the world and not um, by accepting its norms and standards who are truly evil and truly satanic. So what should Christians do in this world? <clears throat> well, let me just follow up on what you're saying. That in America with this campaign in full swing, because there's a, an election next year, and the Christian right is such a large part of the Republican ticket, then the Democrats are launching a very aggressive anti-Christian campaign in America. And some of the political commentators are uh, bringing, this, uh, bringing this up, that uh, they're actually attacking Christianity as a political move. Yes, Marcus Rogers talked about that in his prophecy and you can look at it because I will post my blog entry with a um, prophecy from Madeleine in the commentary field of this video. So you can read the uh, prophecy and you can look at Marcus Rogers' prophecy. It's a video that I linked in the text. But uh, what should we do as Christians? Because we are... We are, we are in this world, we, but we are not of this world. What should we do in order to coexist with this satanic environment? Well, I want you to, to try to appreciate the goodness of, of what God is calling us to here in uh, Ephesians 4.13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Just imagine yourself like that. And there's no higher form of living. We have one life. One life. And if you want to make the most of it, if you want to rise to the highest level that it's possible for you to rise to in this life, that is it. 
and nothing else can compare. There's no amount of food or gasoline or acceptance in the world that can compare with being filled with all the fullness of Christ. Um, this should be more attractive to you than worldly comforts. Yes. I don't know what will happen in the world, but I know that there will be probably underground churches. And uh, in one of the prophecies I also had in my blog entry, it will be that uh, the, the body of Christ will be so heavily persecuted that the Holy Spirit will start to talk to the body of Christ as he did with the first church in Paul's time, when Paul founded the church. That uh, the the calling to meetings and places for meetings will be in tongues. So nobody else but the believers will understand this language and uh, the Spirit will give everyone the spirit the gift of interpretation and speaking in tongues. And that will be the encryption system for Christians to communicate with each other led by the Spirit, just like it was in the first church that was founded in Paul's time, a few years after Christ's uh, resurrection. I feel led to say one more thing here, and that is that if you're involved, if you're a member of one of these antichrist uh, churches, these mainline denominational churches, which are more worldly and more satanic and more uh, homosexual uh, than the way the church should be. I think the consequences for you are grave. I don't think it's so optional for you to be part of a church organization which is so anti-Christ. There may be very severe consequences for you if you do not get out of there. If you feel like you're among the called and the chosen and faithful, then you get out of there. You get out of these evil organizations and you join the, the gathering of saints to um, be a part of the body of the bride of Christ. Yes, and I, I posted on a previous video about uh, how to reach people, believers, Christian believers in Scandinavia and in, in Europe through this network that Torben Sundergaard has established. You will find it in the commentary field if you in one of our other videos. I would like to finish uh, with saying to you, before I leave over to you, Louis, uh, wrapping it up, that we often hear that life is short, so we better enjoy it. But, how about eternity is long, better prepare for it. And this is a very serious message. Because whatever you do in your very, very short life is, is either collecting treasures here on earth that will be destroyed or you collect your treasures in heaven. Because heaven is where you are invited to spend eternity. If you accept this invitation you have to follow Christ and repent. If you don't accept it, if you choose with your own free will to not accept Christ and this invitation, you will spend eternity in hell. So this is rather black or white. And it's now in your life that you are should make that choice. If you die tonight of a heart attack when you sleep, tomorrow it will be too late. So think about that. Eternity alone is long. You better prepare for it. Now I leave over for you to you, Louis, for wrapping this teaching up. It's a very good illustration, the black and the white. It used to be sort of a gray area between the world and the church. If that gray area is disappearing, it's now becoming very black or very white. And there's two things you need to do to assure yourself of salvation. One is repent, which means to change your mind and give up your independent, rebellious frame of mind and adopt a, 
uh, an attitude, a mindset to obey God. The other is to believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, that He died on the cross for your sins, God raised Him from the dead, and you make Him the Lord of your life. You show God your faith and your belief by surrendering your life to Him. You do that, you will be born again. And uh, we will help you. So just contact us and we will help you with sinners' prayers and we will help you to get baptized in the Spirit too. So we open the door for you. If you desire is to come into the door, it's up to you. Okay. Yes. Glory. Very good, Mikhail. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen.